service project, uh, which was part of the lithium release. Uh, I am Prem, uh, I'm the uh, lead for the team, and then this Vishal Tapar uh, is uh, the, uh, one of the main uh, developer in the project. Um, so um, just to be on the same page, uh, I just wanted to understand how many of you uh, are aware about this project in open daylight? Okay, so I see a couple of hands, and, uh, um, and other thing is, uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, MPBGP? Uh, okay, cool, okay. So <laughs> I'm counting Jeff as two. Yeah. So why I asked is, uh, based on that, probably we will navigate it so that we will touch upon all the uh, areas. And uh, another thing what we wanted to discuss uh, today is, uh, um, we do have as part of the L3 VPN service, there are a bunch of uh, utilities uh, function which we have contributed as part of lithium. Uh, even in beryllium, we are planning to enhance it and contribute. So if you are interested, uh, we'll also uh, get into the details of it. Um, the plan we have is uh, we will, uh, by end of beryllium, uh, the L3 VPN project would have uh, quite a lot of uh, this network tools which are generic enough. And this can be used by any other project. For example, we have a tunnel manager, we have a liveness manager, we do have uh, an ID generator on ID manager. So we will just briefly touch upon that, okay? With that, I'll probably get into what is that we have done as part of lithium. Um, so um, in lithium, um, basically the L3 service functions uh, is what uh, we are talking about and uh, we do have uh, these components that are part of it. Uh, before that, let me probably run through you the uh, architecture of uh, the L3 VPN. This is a high-level architecture. Um, the main intent is, uh, let's assume that you have a data center or you have a, you have a cloud service provider who would want to have a um, VPN in components needed for, uh, to support a VPN. So if he needs to do it, uh, he does need to create a bunch of tunnels and then he needs to uh, tag it with uh, the BGP. Okay, for, before that, let me get into the requirements of it. Okay, so take a situation. You have an enterprise and then you want to use Amazon uh, cloud services, right? So Amazon provides you the VPC, right? By which what happens is within the cloud, you would have your VMs running and then uh, the uh, VPC would provide you uh, the VPN service by which what happens is you do have the enterprise being extended to that of cloud, right? Um, so if you look at from the cloud part, if let's assume that you are a service, pro you are a cloud provider, you are, if you want to build these pieces, what is that you have? First, you would have a cloud orchestrator or a cloud management system, which is nothing but the open stack. And open stack would essentially help you create the VMs, it would create the L2, network as well as it would go on to create the L3 network, right? So after that, you do need an overlay as well as a, a plugin or a module to that of a VPN, right? So these components as we speak uh, is pretty important. To draw a parallel to that of what is existing today, you have open contrail, you have Nuage networks, they have a similar solution uh, that is available in the market. Our intent was to have a similar solution be available in open daylight, and that is where this project comes into picture, okay? Uh, with that, what I uh, want to do is, I want to touch upon some of the important components. Uh, what we do is we use the uh, OpenFlow uh, plugin, we use the uh, OVSDB. Um, what we do is we basically uh, connect with that of the uh, data center gateway or the, uh, uh, or the PE where the VPN terminates, and then from there on, uh, we do have, we do create a GRE tunnel to that of the OVS and uh, where the VMs are hosted. And then we basically uh, use the GRE tunnels over which we would build our tunnel uh, to connect these uh, VMs to that of the VPN. And uh, one of the thing what is important is if you have to visualize, right? So the most important thing is you need to have the uh, route updates be available on the uh, cloud side, and that is where we need a BGP uh, um, stack. And we have, as we speak, 
Uh, we are not using the BGP that is present within the open daylight. We have uh, uh, integrated or we have integration with uh, uh, Quagga. The intent is if you want to deploy, you basically uh, download Quagga and then uh, have it integrated. So what happens is you need to pair um, your BGP speaker with that of your enterprise and then uh, we basically talk to Quagga to get the uh, updates. Um, with, so this diagram is pretty much what it explains. And uh, just to be clear that we are on the data center side, we are not on the WAN side. We are not going to control anything on the WAN component. Our scope works within that of the uh, data center or within the uh, cloud uh, side, right? Um, I'll move on to the next thing, and uh, this is uh, a further detailed overview uh, of what it is. As I said, uh, Open Daylight controls the whole thing and then it pairs itself with the routing stack. In this case, it's going to be Quagga. We are all, as we speak, we are going to uh, look to see if we can enhance the uh, BGP LS or the uh, BGP stack that's available within the ODL so that we don't really need to go out and then uh, get the updates. Okay, so uh, the question, if I understood right, is if you are not having a BGP stack, what is that ODL is providing? Is, yeah, is that the... your app? I mean, could you be trying to any traffic space? Like, why, why is there an ODL for the other one? Okay, so uh, the BGP stack just provides uh, route updates, right? Yeah. But then you need to have the pieces, the infrastructure pieces that are needed to uh, build a, like an overlay solution. Right? So the VPN service tries to build a solution for you. So in the essence, uh, we just use it uh, for building the infrastructure components, and then BGP is an important component where it provides the routing. Yeah. yeah. So we use the OpenFlow plugin. We use the uh, OVSDB. I thought, uh, sorry, I had touched upon in this diagram. So we use OpenFlow and OVSDB. Okay, sorry, uh, I was, okay. okay. So uh, using the BGP SV is one of our design goals for Beryllium. Hopefully we should be able to leverage it and reduce some of our workload, so. Right. So I hope uh, yeah. you're on the same page, yeah. Okay, so continuing on this discussion, um, what we have done is uh, we have, we wanted to be standard compliant. Uh, so from that angle, we took the, uh, there is an internet uh, draft available for a, uh, Yang mo for a BGP uh, VPN uh, VPN service, we did uh, take it, and I'll just run through it. Okay, so what is that we have done? Um, so we, ha as I said, um, as we speak, there is a lot of momentum towards adhering to the standards, right? And with Open Config coming to picture. Uh, they do have uh, their own uh, set of uh, Yang models. Uh, so when we talk about the VPN, um, you have to look at two angles to it, right? So for example, if you are a user of VPN, you're not worried about how you are going to, or how is the service provider deploying it, right? It might be anything, right? So which means there are two things, VPN as a service, and then the intricate details of how the VPN gets implemented, right? So one is called the service model. The service model talks about various attributes that are common to that of VPN on the whole, right? And then there is another thing, which is the device model, wherein you need to understand how the service gets translated to that of device-specific modeling or calls, right? So the VPN service as such provides just the L3 VPN, so from that angle, what we have done is we have just taken the device-specific model and then we have developed on it, right? So what we have taken is the um, Yang model, whatever I have mentioned here, that's a device model, we have taken it and then we have built around it, okay? So that's our building block. So going back to the discussion thread, uh, what we do is we use OVSDB uh, to build the tunnels, because if you are aware, OF 1.3 as such does not have 
the tunnel support, right? So what we do is we take the OVSDB part, we set the tunnels, okay? And then once that is done, the uh, VPN service project kicks in, then it would essentially get those uh, information and then we program it as flows in the typical uh, data path, I talk, right? Um, so a couple of other things what I want to do is, so I was touching upon the infra modules, so the tunnel manager, that is uh, what we built. So what we do is, if you connect a bunch of hypervisors together, we first create a mesh between the uh, hypervisors. That's basically an internal tunnel, right? So in the sense that all the hypervisors that are going to be under the control is for or is in a mesh. That's basically used for uh, internal communication. Then what we do is we set up a, a tunnel between the data center gateway to that of each of the hypervisors. That's our uh, VPN uh, tunnel. Right? So in this case, the hypervisors are acting as the VCE slash VPE, okay? And the, the data center gateway acts as the provider's PE, right? Now, the other important angle is BGP, from a BGP point of view, when you talk about it, is there are two attributes that are, that are very important. One is the route distinguisher, and another one is the route target. These are important parameters on which we basically uh, create the fabric. So the route target is nothing but it talks about, the, again, within route target, it has uh, two categories. One is the import route target and another one is the export target. So this is a policy that says what are the routes with, from the data center or the cloud side that can be uh, imported and what are the routes that can be exported. This basically controls the policy, and the route distinguisher is one that basically distinguish from, for example, if you have multi-tenants, the RD, you will have a unique RD for each of the uh, tenants, right? So with that, what we do is we basically attach it to that of, I mean, we have the RD, RT coming from the PE, and uh, when we have the OpenStack integrator, our expectation is that OpenStack would pass on these values to us, and then we will use these inputs to do the uh, tying up or chaining. Okay? Um, Vishal, you wanted to touch upon some of the deep sure. internal, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, some of the information in the last section, we don't have enhanced app handler in lithium yet. It's coming in beryllium. So as part of implementing this VPN service, like you mentioned, we, we are creating tunnels. So when you started working on it, it okay, uh, what does ODL provide me for to, you know, a logical abstraction to create tunnels, and we did not find something that fit our needs. So uh, we have something in our VPN service called Interface Manager, which user configures using this ITF interfaces, which uses a YANG model, which is the ITF interfaces YANG model. Based on that, you can create logical interfaces, and we use that to get configuration parameters for creating tunnels, okay? So that's the interface manager part and the tunnel manager part. And ID manager we are using for generating, oh, so when we're installing flows to route traffic, we are using open flow groups. So uh, I don't know how many of you are subscribed to some of the mailing lists. Uh, sometime two or three weeks ago, someone had a request to you, okay? So many applications are using open flow groups. How do you resolve conflicts between group IDs? How do you make sure different applications don't end up using group IDs? So, we did not have, an, we do not have anything like that in Odeal today. For that, we came up with something called ID Manager. It's a very generic ID Manager. We can generate unique IDs. It supports multiple pools, and yeah. So these are some of the interface, infra type models that he earlier mentioned on that we ended up creating for Lithium, and we'll be enhancing them further. The good thing about the ITF interface is it's any type of interface that you can think of, and any the sort of the hierarchy that you can think of it supports. Like, for example, right now we are using it, we are, we are having tunnels in a failover mode or a load balancer mode, you know? So you have your physical interface on top of it, you may create a VLAN, on top of it, you create one tunnel. Similarly, you create another tunnel, you club them together as a pair and make them act as a single failover or a load balancer pair. So this draft model accommodates any sort of logical abstraction for your interfaces you can think of. Uh, maybe you could call it logical port manager, we call it interface manager. So ID manager and this interface manager to some of the core 
pieces of VPN service that we think others will be able to use them. So we had some of our own use cases, those are taken care of. So one, another thing we wanted to bring up as part of this was, who else is interested in pieces like this? What are your use cases so that we address them and if there's enough momentum, you know, take it out of VPN service. These pieces are today sitting in VPN service just because that's where, that's our repo as part of project, we could get momentum going on it. But ideally, because the com common network utils kind of functions, maybe take them out and so that everyone can use it, so. Yeah, and uh, one other important thing is, uh, let me get on to the next slide. Yeah, so what is that we have planned for the future roadmap? So as I was meant, yeah, sorry, there is a question. We provide L3 VPN. L3 VPN service. as of lithium. L2 VPN is on beryllium roadmap. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, probably. Let me probably uh, explain you from the OpenStack perspective, right? Um, so from OpenStack perspective, okay, again, to realize L3VPN, there are multiple ways to do it. One is what you can do is, as you were mentioning, you would have a vRouter, and then you would have all the uh, hypervisors uh, be part of that particular router, which means that within, uh, behind the router, you would have uh, additional subnets available, right? And then what you will do is you will attach this V router to that of the L3 VPN, right? And then in the router, you would say which the policies on which of the routes you want to expose on which of the routes has, that has to be within or that doesn't want to be exported, right? So this is a typical deployment, right? Um, so from our side, it's a bit different, okay? So if you look at it, the hypervisor uh, in case of lithium is pretty much is the virtual uh, C, right? So that's a customer edge. And then what we do is, we, if, let's assume that there are hypervisor one, hypervisor two, hypervisor three, and each of them having VM that belongs to the same tenant, right? In the ideal world, what you will do is you will not run your uh, tunnels to each of this, right? So, but in our case, uh, the model called for to run these tunnels or terminate at that of the hypervisor or the OVS within the hypervisor. So that's what we have done in case of the uh, lithium. So going forward on beryllium, what we want to do is we want to have a similar construct, right? The similar construct. So how it's going to be is from an open stack perspective, the open stack would essentially provide you all the necessary construct. Of course, open stack has the L3 router equivalent, right? So what we do is there are enhancements that are planned from our side. So what would happen is just to highlight on what is that that's happening on the uh, OpenStack side, there is a um, blueprint called BGB, BGP VPN blueprint. So that particular blueprint enlists what are the features that are going to be exposed or would be developed as part of OpenStack, right? So OpenStack would do a bunch of infrastructure needed for whatever you have asked. Then it would probably provide us the control, and from there on, we would take it and fill up the remaining set of things. Yeah. Okay, I hope that answers. To summarize it a bit differently, so we don't have a dedicated virtual router or anything, but each type of OVS running in each one provides a solution similar to DVR without having to configure a DVR kind of thing. So, so and every VM would always be a one hop away, like you said, we create a sort of mesh, so it's always one hop away. So we fully mesh Yes, we are yes. fully away meshing. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, so, so uh, Jeff, to answer to your question, as I said, right, so we are, the current focus is only on the device specific, right? So to meet that open config or the uh, service level uh, VPN YANG model, we do need additional set of services or additional set of features. Since we are not there, we are not going to expose those, uh, those specific REST calls. So that's the reason I was 
um, explicitly saying it. Uh, it's on the roadmap. It's not there yet. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions? Correct. Yes. We wanted to enhance yes. the ODL uh, BGP stack. Uh, we want to uh, provide the SAFI AFI related to that of the uh, MP BGP yeah, uh, support. And once that is done, we can use the internal ODL uh, BGP stack. So, uh, so yeah, these are some of the okay. yeah. ticket items that we have lined up for Beryllium, like I said. Integrating with the, our own ODLs BGP and then integration with the SFC and BGP. I don't know if any of you are aware that it was mentioned during the SFC and BGP presentations also. And BGP blueprint he already mentioned. There's a good momentum on it, but thing is we can't do anything on the neutron side in ODL till the blueprint gets accepted on OpenStack side. So things are progressing good. So hopefully this all should be closed out during beryllium. And we are some, making some improvements to tunnel manager, adding a sort of another module called liveness monitor. So that's where the, in previous slide, there was something called enhanced app handler, right? So it also comes into that. So uh, see, OpenFlow will give you information when links go down. When you are tunnels, you might be hopping across multiple links. You may not get intermediate path going down. So liveness monitor, which tracks reachability between tunnel endpoints. So that's what we mean by enhanced tunnel manager. And of course, the L2 VPN. Bring it into so I want service. to be uh, a yeah. bit clear on this. It's not the eVPN. Uh, it's basically a, a, uh, it's our own flavor of L2 VPN. So I didn't want to confuse or uh, we are not going to uh, implement eVPN. The when I mean the ma common market terminology is when you say L2 VPN, uh, eVPN is synonymous with that. So we are not going to do an eVPN. Um, so, 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 so that's where the uh, ELAN part comes into picture. So, if you want to do it within your uh, within the uh, cloud infrastructure, within if you want to have the L2 related services, so we are looking to have the ELAN module that would provide the L2. Um, so, to answer to the question. Um, we, ha we I mean, we would not be going outside the data center. That's where I said it's an L2 VPN infrastructure. So to go out, I agree with what you're saying. So it's just an infrastructure, but not the one that goes out. Yeah, probably this can be used as a building block to yeah. build a TBPN. Any other questions? Yes, because. So one other call out is uh, we want to have more contributors to our project. Um, so feel free to ping me or Vishal. Uh, we would be happy to uh, uh, get you bootstrapped with the code and uh, provide you all the needed information. And the other thing is, uh, if you are interested in the uh, infrastructure components, um, please feel free to let us know. We will probably, I mean, the idea is, as I said at the beginning, uh, we wanted to spin it off as a separate uh, project. So the idea is uh, many of you would have a requirement for an ID manager or a uh, and enhanced and just to add to it, uh, you know, maybe you may have a requirement, you might not be aware of it, get in touch with us that these uh, infra modules that we talk about that we are bringing, what they can do as of today, I'm sure some of you would find them useful. It's like the enhanced app manager, enhanced tunnel manager, I'm sure it would be useful to quite a few. So get in touch with us, find out what they do, then is it enough to meet your requirements? If not, let's work out how we go about it. And hopefully if you have enough, maybe we spin off into a, its own project. So, uh, because uh, I've been in touch with some of the folks from LACP team, I know that they had a use case for ID manager, they had a use case for interface manager because they wanted logical abstraction to create LACP. So, and like I said, the way ITF draft is and the way we've implemented it, you, in theory you could have, you know, a pair of VXLAN tunnels and implement LACP on top of it if you want. No, if you want. 
why would you use a different thing? But so the draft and the way we design it is flexible enough to allow you to do whatever you would want to do. So any sort of logical port construct that you want to come up with, it will allow. Uh, and also, to, just to answer to your question, uh, uh, we do have the constructs for a uh, uh, V-router type of thing. Uh, only thing is, uh, they have to be done via the REST conf calls, right? We can, we can help you with that on getting it. But uh, from an end-to-end -end solution, we expect OpenStack to provide us that particular capability. Yeah. Um, so but we do have the pieces here, and then we can, if you want, you can very well configure yeah. it. Actually, uh, good point. Maybe you should take a look at this BGP VPN blueprint in OpenStack, and you know, maybe you should think it doesn't cover some of use, your use cases. Maybe work with OpenStack community and bring those points up to make sure that when it comes in, your use cases are covered. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, we are going to basically ride on this as an R interface from OpenStack, yeah. and it's, we feel that it's better that we have more uh, feedback towards this particular specification, and uh, I mean, that would essentially feed into our requirements. And it kind of is a use case of OPNF here. Yeah. So that's the right. key driving use case for this. I think we're done early. Yeah, and the other thing what I want to highlight is uh, there is also a, a lot of discussion about uh, uh, integrating um, with SFC. The, uh, there are a bunch of requirements that are coming in. The idea is um, we will probably, uh, uh, in fact, during the lithium uh, time frame, what we did was we did have the design in place to integrate with GBP. Um, and uh, uh, what we want to do is we wanted to take it forward. And in, uh, in uh, Beryllium, what we want to do is we want to have GBP to provide the glue layer uh, to integrate with SFC. So that's one other thing I wanted to highlight. Okay. As you can see from all this, right, there's lots of work to do in Beryllium, and yes, contributors are always welcome. We have a small team for now. And if you don't get enough, maybe some of those things would not make it or would be buggy. So you're always looking for contributors. Thank you. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah we, and they're talking more on the northbound side, but yes, southbound yes, plugin south supports yeah. for multiple southbound. It should plugins. not be limited to that. Of yeah. Control. And like we're using OpenFlow plugin, maybe if you have particular device, maybe test with it and right. operability testing and all those things. There are no questions. Thank you. Um, probably I'm, uh, we are available after the uh, we are around here, so we can just discuss for any specific. Uh, topics. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Beryllium, uh, the L3 VPN project would have uh, quite a lot of uh, this network tools, which are generic enough. And this can be used by any other project. For example, we have a tunnel manager. We have a liveness manager. We do have uh, an ID generator on ID manager. So we will just briefly touch upon that. Okay. With that, I'll probably get into what is that we have done as part of lithium. Um, so um, in lithium, um, basically the L3 service functions uh, is what uh, we are talking about. And uh, we do have uh, these components that are part of it. Uh, before that, let me probably run through you the uh, architecture of uh, the L3 VPN. This is a high level architecture. Um, the main intent is. Uh, Let's assume that you have a data center or you have a, you have a cloud service provider who would want to have a um, VPN in components needed for, uh, to support a VPN. So if he needs to do it, uh, he does need to create a bunch of tunnels, and then he needs to uh, tag it with uh, the BGP. OK, for, before that, let me get into the requirements of it. OK, so take a situation. You have an enterprise, and then you want to use Amazon uh, cloud services, right? So Amazon provides you the VPC, right? By which what happens is within the cloud, you would have your VMs running, and then uh, the uh, VPC would provide you uh, the VPN service, by which what happens is you do have 
the enterprise being extended to that of cloud, right? Um, so if you look at from the cloud part, if let's assume that you are a service, pro you are a cloud provider, you are, if you want to build these pieces, what is that you have? First, you would have a cloud orchestrator or a cloud management system, which is nothing but the open stack. And open stack would essentially help you create the VMs, it would create the L2 network as well as it would go on to service project, uh, which was part of the lithium release. Uh, I am Prem, uh, I'm the uh, lead for the team, and then this Vishal Tapar uh, is uh, the, uh, one of the main uh, developer in the project. Um, so uh, just to be on the same page, uh, I just wanted to understand how many of you uh, are aware about this project in open daylight? Okay. So I see a couple of hands, and uh, um, and other thing is, uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, MPBGP? Uh, okay, cool. Okay, so <laughs> I'm counting Jeff as two. Yeah. So why I asked is uh, based on that probably we will navigate it so that we will touch upon all the uh, areas. And uh, another thing, what we wanted to discuss uh, today is uh, um, we do have as part of the L3 VPN service there are a bunch of. Uh, utilities uh, function which we have contributed as part of lithium. Uh, even in beryllium, we are planning to enhance it and contribute. So if you are interested, uh, we will also uh, get into the details of it. Um, the plan we have is uh, we will, uh, by end of, uh, use the GRE tunnels over which we would build our tunnel uh, to connect these uh, VMs to that of the VPN. And uh, one of the things what is important is if you have to visualize, right, so the most important thing is you need to have the uh, route updates be available on the uh, cloud side, and that is where we need a BGP uh, um, stack. And we have, as we speak, uh, we are not using the BGP that is present within the open daylight. We have uh, uh, integrated, or we have integration with uh, uh, Quagga. The intent is if you want to deploy, you basically uh, download Quagga and then uh, have it integrated. So what happens is you need to peer um, your BGP speaker with that of your enterprise, and then uh, we basically talk to Quagga to get the uh, updates. Um, with, so this diagram is pretty much what it explains. And uh, just to be clear that we are on the data center side. We are not on the WAN side. We are not going to control anything on the WAN component. Our scope works within that of the uh, data center or within the uh, cloud create the L3 network, right? So after that, you do need an overlay as well as a, a plugin or a module to that of a VPN, right? So these components, as we speak, uh, is pretty important. To draw a parallel to that of what is existing today, you have Open Contrail, you have Nuage Networks, they have a similar solution uh, that is available in the market. Our intent was to have a similar solution be available in open daylight, and that is where this project comes into picture, okay? Uh, with that, what I uh, want to do is, I want to touch upon some of the important components. Uh, what we do is we use the uh, OpenFlow uh, plugin, we use the uh, OVSDB. Um, what we do is we basically uh, connect with that of the uh, data center gateway or the, uh, uh, or the PE where the VPN terminates, and then from there on, uh, we do have, we do create a GRE tunnel to that of the OVS and uh, where the VMs are hosted. And then we basically uh, 